day, ladies and gentlemen. And good evening, according to where you're viewing us today. I'm James L. Allen. This is the James L. Allen Country Cooking and Variety Show. Now, I'm honored today. I've got a distinguished guest on the show. I've got Mr. Petrie Hawkins Bird. I know I've talked to a lot of friends and relatives in Texas and Oklahoma, and I'll mention the name, and some know the name, but everybody knows the face, okay? Uh, it's a pleasure having you here today, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be and, here. Uh, I've watched you through the years, and uh, you do a good job at what you do. Well, okay? Thank you. Thank you. And, and it seems like so you enjoy you. what you do. Okay? I do. Now, uh, I know I've done a little research about you. I know you were from the East Coast. Yeah. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. Okay. How was the transition coming from Brooklyn moving to California? Wow. Um, quite the culture shock. Um, I had only visited California once before uh, moving here. And... Uh, actually twice. And uh, when I moved out here in 1990, um, so I'm going from Brooklyn um, where um, the, the projects, uh, you know, that, that were across the street from us, um, four square block area held about 11,000 people. Ooh, that's a lot. You know, so to come out here to California where everything is sort of spread out, you know, and uh, you know, it's funny when I saw the, when I first saw the projects out here, I went, Where, where's the projects? You know, I said, wait a minute, you know, you, you, you're the only one in there. Well, that, I, that doesn't seem to be the projects to yeah, me. Yeah. But uh, it was a little culture shock, but uh, 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 a different thing, a nice transition. Well, as I was saying, I come from a farm in Oklahoma. So you're talking culture shock. I oh. moved to San Jose in 1967. Mm -hmm. That was quite a change for me. Yeah, OK, I I mean, the high school that I attended, we had like uh, nine kids in my class, little country town, 800 right, people, right, okay? Right, right. Then to come to a city like San Jose, and when I came to San Jose, it was 140,000 people. Okay. I think it's a little over a million now. Yeah, yeah, a lot but, of people But uh, tell San me Jose. more about yourself. I know you've got a bach uh, Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice. I do, I do. And uh, uh, I know you head up an organization that I've had some contact with, the OK uh -huh. organization. Tell okay. me what you guys do in the OK organization. Well, the OK program is a, uh, Black male mentorship program uh, for um, young boys, um, basically ages 12 to 18, and uh, it is a, a, a positive role model um, uh, endorsed program. It is also uh, a program in which an, an officer uh, is at the core of the program. The officer is the hub, uh, and everything sort of works through him. Um, the uh, founder of the program, uh, which is, by the way, celebrating his 25th year this year, this year is a, a, a former, dep former deputy sheriff, uh, former Sacramento de deputy sheriff uh, by the name of Donald Norcross. Uh, he is the director and the founder of the program. Uh, and uh, 25 years ago, he noticed young black boys going into the system but not coming out of the system unscathed. And so he decided to do something about it. So he started meeting with uh, uh, young African-American boys in the Rancho Cordova section of Sacramento um, on the weekends. Um, he got uh, permission from the, uh, from the uh, uh, people at, uh, um, at Mills Middle School to have uh, the young men from Rancho Cordova High School and from Mills Middle School meet on Saturdays at Mills Middle School um, to uh, uh, talk about things that were affecting uh, young African-American males during that time. Uh, there was a lot of gang warfare and a lot of uh, drug use and a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of things that are problematic uh, to young African-American males. Uh, they were prominent in that community at the time. And Don almost single-handedly cleaned that up uh, by engaging the boys in dialogue on Saturday at, at, at these things that he calls kick it sessions where they come together and they sit and they talk about things that are affecting their community. They have speakers come in to address the boys about um, everything from uh, uh, how to dress properly to um, uh, your, your reaction towards officers on the street. Uh, 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 negative peer group influence. And so they would come in and talk to and engage the boys in that. They also would have the boys um, sort of compete, 
but not necessarily in in the, in the traditional competition roles, uh, you know, in sports and stuff mm -hmm. like that. They would have the boys compete for good grades, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and the reward for the good grades was at the end of the year you got to go on uh, a, the special trip that oh, uh, uh, that they would take them to uh, Disneyland, uh, 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 Yosemite you know, camping and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and so what happened was after a while, the boys were like, hey, you know, I want to make sure that I can be able to go on the trip at the end of the year. So I'm going to compete to have a 2.5 to or greater grade point average. And so it is using positive um, uh, peer group influence uh, to get the boys to look out for one another, understand one another. And it's generational. So young boys who are coming up after their brothers who have been in the program mm -hmm. are looking forward to getting into the OK program. Um, not only is there an officer at the core of it, but there are teammates around him. And those teammates are men from the community, black men from the community. Uh, and it is a program that is run uh, and, and operated by black men. Um, uh, Don's philosophy is that uh, we shouldn't be looking for anybody else. Uh, to take care of uh, the situation that's going exactly. on in our community, we need to take care of that. And so uh, um, I've been uh, the uh, national uh, chairman of the board for, oh my God, it must be, must be 10 years now. Okay. Yeah. Now, Donald has been on my radio show. I met Donald at one of the meetings at Al Wilson's place out in Atlanta. Right, 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 right. And uh, I invited him on the show. He's been on my radio show a couple of times. Good, I talked good. to him once down in Arkansas, and he's been down here at the studio. Uh, you need, yeah, you need to have, you need to have him on I'm this show. I'm going to interact more with that. Yeah. I try to be involved in the community, especially as mentors. We're trying to get together a think tank right now to mentor young black kids, male Donald, and Donald, Donald's, Donald's the man you want to talk to, okay, you know. Okay. Uh, the, the, the OK program is exclusively for males. Because mm -hmm. uh, as Donald says, you know, nobody understands the plight of young black males better than black men. So, so uh, you know, he, uh, you know, a lot of times he gets, uh, he'll catch flack for, you know, hey, you know, what about, what about young girls? And so Don says, well, I tell you what, take the OK program, you understand, get a bunch of women together and do the same thing for girls. Well, see, that's what I'm doing in a think tank that we're trying to get together. I've got some female people that I, I, think would be good mentors for the young ladies, right. okay? And I've got some men involved in organizations that would be good mentors to the male. Absolutely. But uh, tell me, okay, I saw that you did impersonations, okay? <laughs> I heard, now a lot of the young That's a nice people, little segue, you know? Uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> now, that caught my, I like impersonations, okay? Okay. I uh, saw, and a lot of the younger viewers out there can't relate to this, but Sammy Davis and Archie Bunker, <laughs> you do a really good Sam Davis, and you do a great Archie Walker. Is oh, that for yeah. being from Brooklyn or what? Uh, you know, I tell you, man, um, you know, it's because uh, Sammy was one of the first cats yeah. that I saw on regular TV, you know, whether I was watching the Ed Sullivan show or the Red Skelton show. You know, Sammy was the consummate performer, man, yeah, and yeah. he could do it all, you know. He could sing, he could dance, he could, you know, uh, he was the, one of the fastest guns in the, uh, you know, yeah, in Hollywood, yeah. man. And, uh, <laughs> and the cat played trumpets and drums, man, yeah. so, you know, it's really groovy. Now, the funny thing is that, that young people who do... They, they don't necessarily know who Sammy Davis Jr. is, but the, the, his, his personality is such that many people have impersonated him um, uh, over the years. And so they, they, you know, whenever I do it, man, young people crack up because they're like, oh, I know who that you is. You know, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know his name, but I, you know, I, I recognize uh, that, 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 uh, that voice, you know. And then, geez, you know, you, you look on TV there, you know, <laughs> Archie Bunker like there. Archie Bunker there, what you call there, the veteran there, what, WW2 there. Of course, uh, you know, it's nice that the college know who he is, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was listening to the other thing. I was like, he does a good Sammy Davis and he does a great Archie Bunker. Okay. Right. Well, well like one, of, one of the impersonations I do that's, that's under fire right now, but it still gets a laugh. It's when I make sure that I talk to people about the pudding pop. Because uh, okay. a lot of people, you know, he's in trouble right now. But yeah. I tell you, he's a funny guy and he's done so much for the black community with the blackness thing. And we can't make sure that it's black. 
Well, I like Usually. Mr. Cosby up, like you say, he's under fire. But what I always liked about him, and I see how he took Sinbad on his wing, clean comedy. Yeah. You don't get a oh, lot yeah. of that today. Oh, yeah. Okay, when you oh, can yeah. make somebody laugh without getting down in the gutter, well, that's a good thing. Well, the man has also had a number of successful shows that always promoted positive black yeah. images. You know, I mean, he won, I, I believe it's four mm -hmm. uh, uh, Emmys for I Spy, you know. To be the to be the, the sort yeah to be the sort of second banana on that yeah. show you know he obviously was the one that was carrying that yeah. show and uh, you know then there was the, the the Bill Cosby show in which he played Chet Kincaid he played a a, 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 a I think a basketball coach at a, at a at a high school and uh, then he had the Bill Cosby variety show yeah. and 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 finally you know the the, the famous the most famous Cosby show which. Uh, single-handedly saved NBC at that point, you know. Uh, so, you know, so I, you know, I, I implore people, you know, before you buy into all of the, the father all that, you know, and all the flack that, that he's receiving right now, you know, um, you know, Give the man, give the man a chance. You know, well, no, nothing has been proven, well, and and and, and, and he hasn't been charged with anything. Yes, until proven guilty. Right, absolutely. That's that's what this country and is a lot about. Of people, and you know, his status and everything. People out there like to try to pull you down at times. Not sure, like my sure, wife and son sure. We're talking about that coming down. And there's always somebody out there that's going to jump out of the woodworks and throw throw some mud at you. Right, I mean, whether it sticks or not. Right. Okay. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, like I say, it's a pleasure. You know, we got a chance to meet. I think we've been interacting on emails and texts. And, mm -hmm. and, and oh, yeah, yeah, Black yeah, History, yeah, yeah. Black yeah. History Month, we met at the Doubletree Hotel. I want you folks out there to know, man, when this guy pursues you, man, you know, he's like, you know, <laughs> it's like constantly. I was like, if he texts me one more time, you know, so I was like, you know, this Monday, this is the Monday that, you know, this or, or whatever day it is where you are, this is the day, you know, okay. that I, that, that bird finally made it on okay. to well, uh, people that James know me, Allen's they know show. They're saying exactly the same thing that you're saying, okay. But uh, you're here, and I'm glad that you're here. Okay? Yeah, me too. Now, tell me a little more about being in law enforcement. You know, like I say, you transferred from back east out to here, and you worked uh, in Santa Clara. I lived in San Jose, like I said, in Santa Clara County. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your experiences down there. Was it a high school kids that you worked with there? Yeah, uh, I, I was... When I first got out here, I worked at the uh, U.S. Marshal Service as a court security officer um, in San Francisco, um, and uh, and I did that for a number of years. And one day, uh, a, a church brother of mine happened to mention I, I had gone down several times to his school, uh, Fremont High School in Sunnyvale, uh, Sunnyvale, California. I know where everybody I know everybody knows where that is. Uh, and part so, uh, Valley. yeah, part of yeah, and um, and. Uh, you know, he had seen me MC some of the things and, and my involvement with the youth there. And uh, and so he said that there was an opening at a high school. Um, matter of fact, at his high school, at Fremont High School, uh, there was an opening coming up. And, and uh, if I thought about it, I should apply for it. And I, I had just about had enough of law enforcement, I thought. And so I applied for it, got the uh, uh, I got the job, but I but. To his chagrin, I didn't get the job that he was looking to leave. Oh, okay. I got the job at the school he was looking to go to, Monta oh, Vista okay. High School. Um, and I got to that school, and I was amazed at 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 the the, the demographic there because it was, you know, something like, uh, you know, it, it was almost fifty percent white, fifty percent Asian, and you know, uh, uh, like eighteen black students, uh, 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 you know probably 25 Hispanic students and, you know, smattering of everything else, you know. And I was like, why am I here? You know, I, I need to be over there where, you know, where the black kids are, you know, black on black. I'm from Brooklyn, well, you know. that's a good thing, though, because it was, it was good. you could tell them more about our black culture, too. Well, well that, that's, that's exactly what happened. And so I, you know, not only was I the uh, 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 student conduct liaison there, which they called the NARC, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, not only was I that, but I involved myself with the student body. You know, I I would sing with the choir, you know, with the with the chorus uh, that they had there. Um, I would involve myself in the sports, you know, uh, uh, and uh, and also the young, the the few blacks that were there wanted their own black student union. They wanted their own club that that expressed uh, their culture. And so I said, well, okay. I said, but you realize there's only 18 of you here, okay, out of 1,800 students. Yeah, yeah. I said, so what you need to do is you need to educate the student body as to 
who you are and, and, about your, and about your culture. And I said, that's going to require that you learn about your culture. Mm -hmm. So I took them to Marcus Bookstores over in Oakland, uh, which is an institution. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how many years Marcus Bookstore was open at that point, but you know, uh, you, you know, the, uh, the owner, you know, knew so many, so many figures from back in the day, you know, uh, uh, um, in fact, he knew George Washington Carver, oh, okay. you know, which I, which I found amazing. And we sat and we talked for hours about his involvement in Oakland and in the black community and, and, and having this black bookstore as an institution. And so I took the kids on a field trip to Marcus Bookstore. Marcus Bookstore loaned us books on consignment to come and bring to the school during Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And we would change out all the books in the library and put up black books, you know, and, and the, the, the white and Asian population there just went nuts, you know, because they didn't know about black culture. We went to Samuel's Art Gallery, which was uh, in, um, uh, uh, well, it's also, it's also in Oakland, um, uh, down, by the, down by the docks. And, um, and we took uh, Samuel's Art Gallery, we, 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 we got some funds that were, that were allotted to our club. And so we bought black artwork and we put the black artwork up in the in the main office, you know, so that when people came in, they would see, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the contributions of African-Americans to the world of art. And and, uh, and we would do the announcements. We would play a game, you know, a trivia game. And, and whoever came in first, you know, they get free lunch tickets and stuff like that. So they loved Black History Month right. at this at this institution where there were only 18 blacks, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I don't know what percentage that is. Like it's like a half a percentage, mm -hmm. you know. So um, so, uh, uh, you know, that that was a wonderful experience. And and while I was there, I met a young man named Tony Kinkella, a young uh, young man from uh, he was from uh, from Africa. He was from he was from he was from the Congo, uh, and uh, and uh, Tony was instrumental in starting a TV show, much like your TV show, um, uh, you know, local cable access, you know, and uh, and he did a show called uh, uh, the, the National Teen. Uh, uh, high school sports show, or not sports show, but high school show. And he would do, uh, he would, he would do the news, you know, the latest news from around the country. Uh, he would have people submit their tapes from around the country and he would take those tapes and edit them and make a half hour show, which he showed throughout uh, San Jose. Okay. And one day I'm sitting there um, at, at uh, De, Anza, uh, De Anza College, which was where the, uh, Cupertino. The, the, oh, right, ab absolutely, in Cupertino, where where the uh, uh, the TV uh, facility was, and uh, I'm sitting around, and he says, "Man, he says I got two minutes left, you know, that I need to fill on this show," and I happened to be reading the paper, and I was reading about, I think it was the uh, baseball strike at that point, and I was just giving my opinion of how, you know, I man, I can't believe these guys are striking, man, as much money as they make yeah. to play a kid's game, and you know, and I'm mouthing off about that. And he says, hey, can you do that on camera? And I said, sure. So he was the world's fastest typist as far as I was concerned. So I just said to him what I thought. He put it on a teleprompter. And so it was my first time experiencing, you know, being on camera and, and being on a teleprompter. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize at the time that that was the prelude to me uh, having a career on um, Judge Judy, yeah. uh, which has so far lasted 19 years. Well, it's number one court show on TV. It is. It is. It is. Sure. It's, it's, it's been one of the number one, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the top rated syndicated shows, period. Okay. Uh, the, now, you know what I like about the fact that you being on that show? You're from here in Elk Grove, California, and you remained here. You didn't move to Hollywood or... No. Up, uh, up in Manhattan or wherever you're still here. Mm -hmm. Now, I think Lester Holt, he's from the area. He went to Cordova High here, mm -hmm. but he's in Chicago now. Okay? okay. But you stayed here, and that's a good thing. In fact, I've talked to several people. I was to Channel 13 with Carl Curtis for a long time. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows your face. If they yeah. don't know you, they, they know your face. I, I've, been, I've, sure. been, I've been around. I've been and around. And like, uh, they say, well, I've, I've met him before, so he's a good guy, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, a lot of people out there, they will say, well, hey, he's not this, he's not that. You know, it's always somebody going to throw stuff. But I've never heard that about you, and that's a good thing. Well, yeah, you know, you got to you gotta be careful with people because sometimes people will, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do that, and they'll, you know, and that's what I'm saying. So I, 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 I just make sure that I try to do the best I can. That's all. Well, you're doing that. 
But what prompted That was you Denzel, to... in case y'all didn't know it, you know. Because <laughs> I know y'all thought that was Bernie Mac, but it ain't him. Oh, Bernie's my boy. He was my boy. Excuse me. Excuse <laughs> me. Don't interrupt. I'm trying to do something here. <laughs> y'all got to pray for me. <laughs> I love Bernie. Oh, rest in peace, Bernie. But, uh, I'm sorry. What, these things what just pop up. What prompted you to go into law enforcement to begin with? Okay. <laughs> Oh, um, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, some people have a desire to be in law enforcement. I didn't necessarily have a desire to be in law, for, law enforcement. I didn't have anything against law enforcement, but uh, it wasn't anything I was looking towards. In fact, um, the whole time I was in school uh, and the reason I got a criminal justice degree was I was looking to become a lawyer, you know, and fight for the rights of the, you know, the downtrodden and, uh, you know, be broke for the rest of my life. And uh <laughs> And uh, I remember I when my work, I remember my oldest daughter's mother, uh, not when she got pregnant, but when, when we knew that she was having a baby, I just knew that I needed another job. I needed a, a, a better paying job. And at the time, um, I, I looked in a, a newspaper called The Chief, which is um, a, a paperback in New York that um, kind of outlines uh, uh, different tests that they're giving for civil service jobs and one of the jobs that was um, uh, that was uh, testing at that point was the New York State Court Officers. And so I took the New York State Court Officers test and long story short two and a half years later uh, became a court officer uh, in Brooklyn Family Court. A year after that I was transferred to Manhattan, Manhattan. Family Court and that's where I that's met, met the Judge infamous Judy, huh? Judge Judy. Okay. Yes indeed. Uh, well, Mrs. Chandler, she's a, she shoots from the hip. I yeah. like her, okay? Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, being a judge, after dealing with people for so long, you get to read people pretty well on the spot, okay? I sit and notice yeah. that about her. And she can tell usually when they're lying to her, okay? Yeah. She'll yeah. point that out, you know, like well, she I remember said, one day she said, I, I don't want to be judgmental. I said, well, who, who else is going to be? You know, that, that that's what you do. You well, know? I like to say that she always says, says, you know, they don't have me here because I look good. They have me here because I'm smart. There you okay. go. That's right. She that's is. right. Okay. Yeah, she is. But tell me, you've got, uh, what, four children? I do. I have I have four grown children. You <laughs> well, know. you say that. I've got four grown ones, too. Okay, yeah, well, and well, yeah, yeah I'm grown, too. Every time I see them, <laughs> I grown. <laughs> I no, I, I'm just, <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, four children. Well, are you glad you made that move from the East Coast to the West Coast? I am. I am. You know, God has an amazing way of uh, getting your attention and uh, uh, putting you in a place uh, where he can uh, bless you and make you a blessing. And so uh, I couldn't have been the blessing that I, that I hope I've been uh, to my family and to the community unless um, I was willing to move west, young man. And, okay. uh, well, you being on Judge Judy, and I understand you sent her a congratulatory letter, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And I think you reminded her that your uniform still fit, too. Right? Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. Okay. That's what... Uh, and she did not reply with a letter, but she replied with a phone call. She right? replied with a phone call, and, and I was I was, I was, was at work, and I was surprised, and she said, you know, she said, I know you were kidding in your letter about, you know, still looking good in uniform, and, you know, and, you know, uh, if I needed a bailiff, she said, but she said, I do need a bailiff, you know, and, uh, you know, and I replied simply, ah... I'm uh -oh. so uh -oh. in love with you. No, I didn't. No, no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right. Whatever you want to do is all right with me. No, I told her. I just told her. I said, hey, look, you know what? Uh, you know, whatever you're offering, you know, I'm willing to take a look at. And uh, uh, and that joke in that letter turned into so what is so far a 19 year career hey. and and looking forward to I don't know how many more, but uh, I'm, I'm riding that one until the, until the wheels fall off the wagon. Well, I'm a strong believer. I watch T.D. Jakes a lot of times, and like he said, and like my mama said, nothing just happens. Everything happens for a reason. There you okay? go. <laughs> Actually, okay. man, thank you for what you do. You know, um, um, you know I, I just want to say before I leave that um, there's an old phrase that you and I both know. Uh, uh, you know. Our parents would tell us to be a credit to our race. And I think that uh, people feel that that's old fashioned and that that's passe, but I don't believe that. I believe that whatever we do, we are to be a credit to our race because uh, it's been proven time and time again that there are some folks who don't understand us, uh, who expect little from us. And when some of us deliver mm -hmm. that, that little bit, they say, ah, see, 
That's why you can't give them an opportunity because yeah. they don't know how to take advantage of it. And they don't, right. you know, they don't, you know, as our parents used to say, you don't know how to act, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, uh, but I think that when, uh, when we do our best and when we present our best and when we give opportunity for others to show their best, then we're a credit to our race and uh, we're a credit to the memory of those great African-Americans and Africans who came before us, who sacrificed a lot oh, yeah. so that oh, we yeah. could enjoy uh, some of the freedoms that we enjoy today. And I, I, I believe it, it, be, it behooves us not to forget uh, the, 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 the Jewish people have a saying, never, never forget. And that's what I say to our people, never forget who you are and what you're destined to do. We are destined for great things. God created us for great things. Okay. And so uh, be a credit to your race. Okay. Yeah. What are some of the events you've got coming up in the future that, that we might be uh, um, interested in? Wow. Okay. Um, at, the end of, uh, at the end of May, uh, uh, first week in June, uh, I will be up at... Um, the Legends of the Game golf tournament uh, up in Reno, Nevada. Okay. Um, and uh, that's put on annually. Uh, many sports legends uh, show up there. And I have no idea why I'm up there because I'm not a sports legend, nor do I golf. But, uh, but, I, but, 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 yeah, but, but, but I, I guess, I guess because I'm me, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty much, I, it's funny. Uh, Fred Williamson and I were were at um, the hammer. The, the hammer, yeah. Right we're we're at a we're at a, a Converse uh, outlet, you know, Converse store, um, and we're sitting there. And so I'm sitting there with some pictures and a, a, a marker, and kids are coming in, and and so the kids and their parents are flocking over to me, you know, oh man, we love you on Judge Judy, you know, oh, thank you, you know, and I'm taking pictures with them and everything. And Fred Williamson is sitting there. So Fred Williamson looks up and goes, uh, so what about me? And what he has is he has these, these uh, poster, uh, postcard size uh, pictures of himself um, from the movies, oh. you know, from like, you know, Black Godfather yeah. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, you know, Fred, you know, it's a sport, you know, we're in a sports store. You might, you know, I can understand why I don't have anything, but you have pictures of you and, you know, in, in uniform, you know, actually having played professional football, you know, and, uh, and so he signs one for this kid and the kid, I'd watch a kid go over to his parent and go, who's that? <laughs> and the parent looks at him and goes, I don't know, just take it. <laughs> you know, but, well, you know, T.D. Price that's here, he said you guys did some Al Green. I saw him talking yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, uh, I, I think I'm also scheduled to be at the uh, Sacramento Music Festival this year. And uh, the past couple of years, I've, I've sung with uh, 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 with a couple of people, Kyle Rowland, who well, is, uh, uh, yeah, performance yeah, performance. yeah, Kyle, hey, you know, Kyle, 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 is, Kyle is a great performer, man, great uh, harmonica player. Uh, uh, Kyle always has me do one or two songs with him, man, and we just have a great good time. Kid. We have it's a great time kid. making up blues lyrics oh, okay. on the spot, you know, and, and, and I always beat Kyle out because okay. my, my, my blues lyrics always lead to a funny punchline, okay. and so, you know, and so the crowd just goes, oh, did you hear what he said? But, uh, <laughs> But uh, so that 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 should be fun, and I think that that's uh, Memorial Day weekend um, in Old Sac. So come on out and enjoy that. I think Kyle was like 15 when I first had him on the radio show. He just turned 21. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I've, I've, I've probably known him man since he was about 13, 14 years old, and he's just phenomenal. You know, uh, Mick Martin, uh, old blues cat uh, 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 here in uh, local blues cat. Uh, kind of plucked him out of the audience one day and just uh, had him come up, man, and, uh, and has taken him under the wing ever since. So He's got a great future. Great I mean, future. he does, man, you know, <laughs> and uh, can you dig it? I knew that you could. Hey, so. like I say again, I appreciate it on, you know, at any time, okay? My pleasure. Okay. Thanks, man. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back uh, with my next guest, uh, Mr. Rob Prather. Appreciate you coming uh, down today, Rob. Happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, He's an illustrator, a cartoonist here. You got a comic book that's out. Now, it's really strange. I didn't know he was off into uh, the comic and illustrations because when I came into contact with him, uh, it was on the musical end. I'm a promoter, and uh, 
he and a, a couple of his friends have got an a cappella group called True Styles, okay? Yes, sir. I, got, I think I was telling people earlier, I went to the bathroom <laughs> doing a break on my radio show, and I was coming back down the hall, and I heard you guys singing. I didn't know it was you. I thought it was Boys to Men. I thought <laughs> my, my daughter's boyfriend was playing Boys to Men, and I looked in the studio there, and he wasn't, and I walked back out, and I looked around the corner, and it was you guys. You sound really good. Oh, thank you. But, thank hey, you. how long have you been into illustrating? This, this oh, is unique. Man, I've been... Get into drawing since I was five years old. Okay. I've been watching the uh, cartoons back in Memphis, Tennessee. So I remember back in back in the days, did a lot of cartoons, a lot of hand drawing, animation shows on TV, on especially on major networks too. So that inspired me to learn how to draw and do do hopefully get my stuff out there. One well, day. hey, I'm glad to see that you're pursuing your dream, and everybody oh, should. You. Okay, never give up on it. All right. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's like I tell people a lot of times. I I grew up on a farm in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and I can remember out in the feel you know like picking pulling corn or chopping cotton uh, and i had my little transistor radio oh, and okay. i said god i'd love to be a dj someday yeah. okay and then uh, boom i got my own radio show back there i got my own radio show here okay yeah. then I was, one of my other dreams was to be on tv okay so i've been on other people's shows a lot and now i've started my show it's been about a year now and we've okay. got like a half a million viewers uh, that are man. you know tuning into us and uh, we're picking up more viewers all the time. But uh, for folks out there that, that know Rob and know his work and just know him from singing, mm -hmm. this show will be aired on YouTube first, okay, on the James L. Allen mm -hmm. Country Cooking and Variety Show, okay? okay? And then we will air this on Comcast here, Channel 18. Right. That will cover the Sacramento area all the way down to Modesto and all the way up to Marysville, okay? Beautiful. Then we'll come back with AT&T UVerse Channel 14. And for you people out there with your iPhones and your computers, you can pick it up at accesssacramento.org. Okay? Yeah. Now, go ahead and tell, tell us more about what you, your work here. Okay. So, um, I, so, I came ready, as you can see. I want to talk about this piece first. This one right here, I um, did a couple of illustrations of uh, my style. Um, this one right here is my uh, comic book cover. I don't know if you can, hopefully you guys can see it. Um, I, I've been working on this. This uh, story for two years, since I, since I graduated school, I've been working on this for two years. I finally got it finished. Um, right now, it's in the process of being edit, edited right now. This is the comic book called, cover called The uh, Grand Soul for Gent. The Grand Soul for Gent is based on a uh, young guy who has an old soul like myself. He, loves, he has a love, big love for old school music, any urban old school music, uh, even today's music. But he used that to his advantage. He used that to fight crime in Memphis, Tennessee. So yeah, you see a lot of dancing, a lot of you know, a lot of dance moves, a lot of uh, you know, tap dancing. So all the urban, urban uh, dance moves that he used that to the martial arts. So that's what I'm trying to put out there to the world, Grand Sofa Gent. And this right here is also my new edition fan as well. I did a, a portrait of Belle Biv DeVoe. So you have Ronnie, you have Mikey, you have Ricky. So one day this came popped in my head. Um, I did this on Fiverr.com. So I figured I just wanted to figure out what do I want to do, what do I want to market on Fiverr.com. So I just saw in my it popped in my head. So okay, I'm gonna do a portrait picture of um just this doodling. All of a sudden, it turned into this. So it's the song Poison. I mean, some of you guys know that song, of course. So this one I did of a yeah, Bella DeVoe. So hopefully, I get to meet them one day and hopefully they can autograph it for me. So that's that's my one of my goals this year. Also, I did. Here's also another picture I've done on uh, Fiverr.com. Uh, this is a client of mine. Um, he wanted me to do a, a soulful style portrait of himself. This is more of an illustrator blend. Had, I used a lot of blend tools, a lot of um, shadows. Just to, it looks a little more realistic, but it's still an illustration. So that's why I want. That's why I'm also selling on Fiverr.com. His name is uh, Nico R. Charles. I believe he's a promoter or a rapper. Um, didn't really get too much information on him though. But he's the one that uh, he. He put me out there as far as you know as an artist. So you know, sharing my sharing my uh, page, Fiverr.com. I really appreciate him for that. And uh, I'll give him a shout out too as well. <laughs> Let's see. And also is another another uh, cartoon portrait I did of my friend's kids. He's also in my group. His name is uh, Trey Bradley. This is his kids. We have uh, Lyric. We have Trevion. Did a little cartoon portrait of them. Almost look kind of like Bebe's kids. So that's um, he 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 liked it. His uh, his girl liked it. So hopefully, hopefully you guys like it as well too. And also here's a uh, another project I'm working on after my comic. This is another cartoon of my personal cartoon I'm working on mine called The Hardheads. This uh, uh, as you can see they have a 
have more of a frightful face. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, okay. They look very terrified right now. Um, this takes place in the South as well. Um, it's about kind of based on me and my cousins growing up down South, uh, getting into trouble, doing, you know, things we're not supposed to be doing, but we're hard-headed. We, sometimes as kids, we don't listen, yeah, but after yeah. a while. We've all been there. Yeah, we all <laughs> been there, yes, <laughs> especially. So uh, this is a little snippet of it. Um, I, I don't know if you guys played Bloody Mary as a kid. So this is a scene where they're uh, playing Bloody Mary in the bathroom. They chant the name. Bloody Mary actually comes out out of the mirror and scares them. So they look very scary. She comes out with a belt at that, too. So, you know, most folks know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially so, in the South. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. The they don't spare the rod. Uh-huh. So I think that's it. And also, I have one more, one more thing I want to um, – two more things I want to show you as well. Also, give a shout out to my uh, guys, my boys, True Styles. We did, I did a, uh, it's my first soulful pitch that I've done. I learned, I learned this in school, and since I learned in school, I've been hooked on it just like that. It's a portrait of myself right here on the, uh, on my right side. And also, here's a uh, picture of my group. We have Jermaine right here. We also have Trey, and that's me, form True Styles. This is a group that James Allen was telling you guys about. We sound like boys to men. You can also check us out on YouTube as well. Yeah. Just, just you know, for plug. <laughs> so, yeah. So. Well, hey, to me, it seems like your drawings are just like your music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I know myself. I try to strive to be good at whatever I do, okay? And it seems like that's what you're doing, too. And uh, I'm a lot older than you, but I always remember that in life, you know, nothing just happens. Everything oh, yeah. happens for a reason, okay? I believe it. I mean, good or bad, it happens for a reason. There's a lesson to be learned out of just about everything. Yes, sir. But, uh, hey, the comic book. Oh, okay. Well, this right here is also another, sorry, I forgot to mention the comic book. This right here is, once again, I told you I love New Edition. This is a project done, I've done uh, back at school at our International Academy of International Academy of Design and Technology, we had to do a book project. Mm -hmm. So I decided, I didn't really have any ideas on what I wanted to do, so I decided to do a little mini bio uh, story of New Edition. This is only part one of it. This is when they got started in the Archer Park in 1978. I'll show you a little bit of in insides of it. Let's see, it's a little inside. So we got Bobby, we got Bobby Brown, uh, Michael Bivens, and uh, Ricky Bell rehearsing, practicing for a talent show. I don't know if you guys know the backstory about New Edition. And also, there's Ralph about to go meet up with them. So this is just a little snippet of them in Archer Park, Archer Park in the beginning. So you know, it's pretty much just pretty much telling the whole story. And also, we got a picture of them uh, performing at the talent show. They're singing uh, the Temptations uh, Get Ready. So I try to make it look very, very old school as possible, like it was based in 1978. So that's 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 one of my well, things. Let me take a look. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, oh yeah, know. that's that's. I was from that era. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I was trying to. Pretty much, that's one of my goals. When I, when I'm, as an artist, I want to be able to bring out. I want people to feel like they're actually there in that year, in that decade. So that's why I was trying to bring out when it comes to drawing and putting in the illustrations, especially the soulful style. Okay. Now you said you've been doing this since you were young. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Uh, I watched a lot of cartoons when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, they were yeah. a lot different today than they were back then, but right. still they were fun. You know, that uh -huh. was all my friends who couldn't wait to get home from school, you know, because there'd be yeah. a line of cartoons and, and other shows like the Three Stooges and different mm -hmm. shows on for kids. But uh, what's your goal in this? Okay, what, what are you aiming for? My, my goal is to be able to be able to get my stuff out to the world, be able to get my... Um, my, my style of animation now. I mean, of course, we have a lot of, pretty much there's a lot of guys back in the day that did stuff like this back in the day, especially of color as well, too. But I want to also get my story told as well. I want to be able to kind of bring feel-good entertainment. That's what I want to do, bring feel-good entertainment, positive entertainment. Because today, some, some of the shows today is kind of kind of out there, yeah. but still entertaining as well. But I kind of want to bring that back, like back in the 90s when most of the shows, most of our shows were, you know, positive, taught, le teach lessons. Yeah. Not saying that some of the shows don't, but, you know, that to, to me it's like, it's more of a more of a humble standpoint, if, if that makes sense. You know, yeah, like yeah. if you look at some of the stuff today, you know, it's kind of out there, it's still entertaining, as, as I said as well. But I kind of want to bring some of that, that you know, that positive, you know, that that humbleness back to. And some of my shows, I just want to bring in. I also want to be able to sell my art, my comic books, and also just to tell stories. You know, funny stories some people can relate to, and also make some extra money too. I'm not gonna lie about that. But yeah, just pretty much put Southern Island on the map. I also put my hometown on the map as well. Okay, now you said Tennessee. How long have you been in California? Uh, I want to say I moved out here in 2000. I moved out here when I was 13, so I want to say about 15 years. 15 so you're old enough to know both back in Tennessee and here. The oh, difference yeah. In the no, 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 okay. yeah. Yeah, I definitely can't forget Because I come to California when I was 17, and it was like uh, going into a completely different world. It, okay. Uh, 
But I like the world back there. I've spent as much time back in Oklahoma where I'm from as I have here. And right. I go back there, I like that little slower pace. It's a nice change, yeah. okay? Because everything out here is hustle bustle, you know, oh, it's exactly. a lot faster pace. Exactly. But uh, do you go back home often? I, uh, last time I back home was back in 2012. Um, I haven't been back in a while, because I'm be honest, I, I do have a little flair of flying. Oh, but, okay. but I'm trying to get, I'm working on that, trying to get over there and go back out there to see my family. But I've been out there a couple of times. Uh, everybody's growing up now, my little cousins. It's yeah, tall now, yeah, yeah. so I want to be able well, to. Well, it doesn't uh, take long. I was yeah. sitting looking at my granddaughter the other day. I can remember when I was holding her and she was crawling around. Now mm. she'll be 15 in a couple of weeks, you know, that's, and that's I'm looking amazing. at she's up there taller than her mom, okay? Wow. And I told my wife, I said, we're not getting older, okay? Oh, we're yeah, still yeah. the same. Oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, I've been through uh, Memphis and uh, going down. My wife is from Pensacola, Florida, so we go through okay. there quite a bit, you know, and we've stopped and had food there. They're known for the good uh, southern yeah, cooking yeah, there, the barbecue, too. You know? the pool barbecue, pool. oh, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. But uh, you try to go back home often. I've never... No, oh, I always yeah. try to keep in touch with, oh, with I home. Am. Okay. I, am. I talk to my grandmother on the phone. I see how she's doing. Get a shout out to my grandmother if you watch this. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my mom. Um, also, people in Tyler Thomas, my family in Tyler Thomas, Mississippi, too. I have a family all over the okay. South and also Chicago, everywhere. Shout out to everybody. And also, California family as well. Just want to just. I, was, I, I love everybody. <laughs> well, I see in the South, well, most most families, they went in two directions. They either stayed there and they're still there, mm -hmm. or they went to a bigger city. You know, usually yeah. like to Chicago, uh, Detroit, New York City, exactly. or they came to the West Coast. I know in my family, mm -hmm. uh, everybody went to Houston, or they come to California, to right. L.A., San Diego. Mm -hmm. uh, did very many people go to the East, okay? Mm -hmm. But I've got family, lots of family in Houston. Like Debbie Allen, the choreographer, she's oh, yeah? uh, my dad's niece. Okay, oh, uh, nice. Felicia Rashad. Okay. Oh, okay. But uh, hey, never forget your roots. Okay. Oh. And uh, I, what you doing? I didn't know. I knew you from singing, like I said, but I know you were illustrator. And like, God, you do good work. Man. Oh, you thank you. Really, it caught my eye. Thank okay, you. that's why you're thank sitting you. here today, besides me just knowing you as a friend. <laughs> but it caught my eye. And I've, I was telling uh, another friend of mine, he has a TV show, and he's mm -hmm. interested in having you on his show also. Cause I was, he said, an illustrator. I see a young nice. man, young man. He said, okay. He said, I'd like to meet him. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, you know, you never know that first step. I remember I went back home. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an outdoor arena. I had a really nice outdoor arena. And okay. my first show, opening, nobody showed up. Wow. Okay. This was like in April. But mm -hmm. you never give up. You keep chugging oh, away at oh, it. Of course. Well, September came. I had thousands of people there. Okay, See. I had a concert, I had a rodeo, I had all kinds of things going yeah. on. But I always keep looking forward, moving forward. Yes, okay. Sir. I want to thank James Allen for having me again. You can, you can look me up on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Southern Outlined. And also you can check out my Fiverr page slash Rob Prather. I really appreciate you guys checking me out. I hope, hopefully I'll be an inspiration to everybody else, especially everybody, anybody that loves to draw and do cartoons. Um, let's make it to the top. But hey, man, it's a pleasure having you down on the show today. Oh, and like I say, well, I'll check back with you in a couple of months. We'll have you back in and see okay. how things are progressing, okay? Okay. But like I say again, folks, you'll be able to pull Rob up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be on Channel 18 Comcast if you're in the Sacramento area, down to Modesto or up to Marysville, AT&T, UVerse, Channel 14, okay. and AccessSacramento.org, okay? It's a pleasure you coming down, man. Hey, you'll be back uh, again soon. Okay? Yes, sir. Take care. Thank you.